Okay, this is um, going to be a tutorial that was like the tutorial that I did in class the other day. This is uh, something that we learned from Jeff Campana, and um, this is how to make a rib, a throwing rib, uh, or I suppose just a, a rib, you know, if you needed a texture rib or something for hand building, um, this would be applicable there too. So um, anyway, at the moment, I'm not super familiar with Fusion 360, so I'm not going to go into all of the settings and stuff like that up here. I'm just going to kind of follow the uh, tutorial that Jeff, um, that I, where I learned this from Jeff. So uh, anyway, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to um, uh, open up the sketch format here. We're going to pick this. You can pick different planes here. We're going to pick this one that's closest to us here. And then uh, we're just going to kind of zoom in. Again, this is easier with a mouse that has a scroll bar and a right click option. So now we're going to go up here to the rectangle. We're going to select that. And uh, we're going to just come down and we're going to click once and then um, make a rectangle shape here. Okay, so now we'll zoom in a little bit of that in there and then we'll kind of center that. Um, now with this one, you can make uh, kind of curved ribs here. Um, I'm going to make a angle, an angled one. I made a curved one in class the other day, but um, I'm going to kind of start with this um, angle one. I'm going to start with a little vertical thing at the top here and then maybe kind of, let's see, kind of come down here and uh, kind of put a few points in here that I want to, I kind of want to have this little, sort of zigzag pattern on the bottom of the vessel. So um, let's see, I'm going to come down here and we'll put one more and then we'll just come down vertically to um, kind of make a little foot there. And so um, then when you do that, just hit enter when you have your, your line done. Um, so now you have uh, basically a sketch that has two different halves here. So what you're going to do is remember that your rib is going to be the negative side of the vessel. So this is kind of going to be your rib. We'll use this side to anticipate what the vessel is going to look like here. So what you want to do here is just select this by left clicking it, then right click and go down here to extrude. I believe that uh, option is up here or in the file menu too. Um, so anyway, just uh, what you want to do is you extrude it. And then I go over here to kind of just rotate. Um, oops, it looks like it. Yeah, there we go. So then once you have your extrude uh, um, option selected here, you can pull this and extrude this out into a shape. Okay. Um, and so uh, in Jeff's, uh, Jeff recommends a, a 0.25 millimeter extrusion for the rib. Um, and that makes a pretty nice flexible rib. I, I did do a test at 0.5. And um, it's still flexible, but it's definitely stiffer. So, uh, so let's stick with his recommendation since he is a smart guy. So, um, so we're gonna just hit enter, and then now we're gonna kind of zoom in. And a um, couple of things to note here that um, if you uh, so for me, my my left hand is my outside hand when I'm throwing. So I'm gonna be holding this in my left hand which means that the clay is going to be spinning around this way here. So I'm going to need a bevel on this side. Most people in the United States, at least, would hold the rib in the right hand um, because your right hand is the outside hand here. And so you would want to put your bevel on this side. The idea is that you want the bevel to sort of smush the clay back into the pot. So it's sort of compressing it as the clay is going around. And so for me, it would be opposite here, you know, for, for my purposes. So anyway, I'm going to come around here and um, I'm going to bevel this side of it. But again, most likely you're holding the rib with your other hand. So you would want to bevel the other side. So uh, anyway, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to select these, um, these lines here. And what you do is kind of click on there and you'll see it's highlights in blue. And then what you do is if you shift, hold down shift, it will um, increase your selection here. So you want to just select all these lines um, uh, at once. I suppose you could do them individually, but it's probably faster to do it this way. Okay, and so now I have these selected. Um, so let me just kind of recenter this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and then I'm going to right click 
and go down here to this option called chamfer. Um, now again, since I've used this a few times, the option is in this little drop down menu. Uh, I believe the first time I did it, it was up in the upper menu up here somewhere in the file menu. So I'm going to hit chamfer here. And then, um, yeah, so this is uh, what happened in class the other day too. There's, oh, there's a little arrow right there. So what I'm going to do is I can just push this in. I can also just sort of set it here if I want. Um, for my own purposes, the ones that I've been testing in class, I've been using 0.15. Um, the reason for that is that I kind of want a little bit of a lip right there. I don't want this to come to a sharp point because in a way I don't trust the 3D printer to print such a fine point there. Like I would be worried that over time the the tension or the, the stress of the clay going by would tear this edge if it's if it's a really sharp point. So so 15 or 0 .5, 0 0.15 is a good option here. So I'm gonna hit enter. Okay, so now let me scroll out and now I have this cool bevel here on the um, on the rib. Um, now the other thing, one of the other things that um, Jeff suggests, which I think is a good idea, is to just get a little bit of a um, uh, a curve on these on these edges here, uh, around this back corner, since this could be kind of sharp. And um, so what you do is you'll click on this little um, option here called fillet, and it's going to basically round the edge here. So then you select this narrow edge here, click on that and then just pull this in. Um, and if you wanna make sure that they're the same on each side, just remember this number here, or you could type it in. So I'm just gonna say it's 0.6, um, and then that rounds that off. Now I'm gonna do this to the bottom. So let me come down here to the bottom. Yeah, there we go. And then I'm gonna hit that fillet button again. Oops. Okay, looks like it's already, let's try that again, okay. So now I'm gonna, you know, just come in until it's also 0.6. Again, you could just type it in there, but okay. So now we have our cool rib here, and that's kind of cool. So let's. Um, we also want to go and see what it's gonna look like, um, you know, when it's you know the vessel here. So this is something that I that. Um, uh, I showed in class. So anyway, what you want to do is your other your sketch is going to be probably hidden here. So just you want to take a look at that again. So just hit that little icon, the little eyeball icon. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this half of the sketch and then go to this option here called Revolve. And then the thing that you want to do is make sure it says New Body here. You don't want it to attach this object to this object here. You want it to create a new object. And then so it's going to ask you where you want to basically revolve around the center. And for our purposes, we want to revolve around this axis right here. So we click that and that's going to show us, you know, basically what we're looking at for our vessel. Okay. So yeah, it's a little funky. I'm not sure I love this design here. So um, that's something that obviously is a lot easier to see once we have you know, um, sort of revolve that other shape. And so I'm gonna make a couple little modifications here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to bodies and I'm gonna turn off the visibility on, um, oh, what I need to do first is I need to hit enter so I can kind of confirm that this is another shape. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off this one here, okay, so I can see my thing again. Now I'm gonna click over here and right click here and I'm gonna edit the sketch again. So I'm gonna go back to the sketch interface and I'm just gonna kinda, kinda mess around with this a little bit here. I'm gonna pull this in slightly so it's not so exaggerated. And maybe kinda sort of bring that down there, like something like that, maybe a little bit more. Maybe come bring this up a little bit. Again, I'm not super comfortable yet with this, so kind of just have to fiddle around with it and see. So let's just see what that does. Now the cool thing is, is that we've made alterations to our sketch, and so um, now we can change. Well, now we can see it in the positive, which would be this side over here. But first, we need to hit this finish sketch thing. So we finish the sketch. 
And then we go back over here to bodies, and if we turn on this body now, we can then see the effects of what we've done here. Um, so that's a little better, actually. I sort of like that. Um, yeah, I think for now we'll just kind of leave that. This is kind of a little bit of a sharp point here, but um, it, it'd be worth a try to kind of see what happens there. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this off. If we're happy with the positive shape that we have here, we'll turn this off. And, um, and then we're, uh, and then now we just, we're going to save it and then um, export it as an STL, STL file. Um, so now once I do that, then I can put it in, in Cura or another slicing program and, and um, prepare it for the printer. Um, and so what I've been doing is I haven't gotten a good handle on how to size things very well in Fusion 360. So um, I've been just sizing in the slicing program, which is pretty easy. So um, for now, I would just go ahead and do that. Um, so the, you know, you're just going to want to go to File, Save, and it actually won't let you export it until you save it. And um, the process of saving and exporting uh, can take a little while because it's going to process the digital file in the cloud, which um, is nice that it doesn't put so much pressure on the computer. So, um, so anyway, that's uh, that's how you create the rib. Once you have the rib, then the next thing to do is just take it to the wheel and try it. And as you saw in class, um, if you watch that demo, um, you know it, do, it it is kind of a little bit of a different thing once you start to have it in a real object. So. Um, the, uh, another thing that's kind of nice about this is being able to save that original file and then make changes to it after you have, uh, you know, after you've thrown with it, you know what I mean? So, um, so just make sure you save it, um, somewhere that you can find it again. And, and, um, the next thing to do is just to use it and see, see how it works. So, um, if you have any questions, just let me know. And, um, again, I appreciate, just want to give another shout out to Jeff Campana, um, for sharing this information with me so I can share it with you. Um, and so I'm excited for that um, sort of um, collaboration there. So anyway, thanks so much.